All right. Today, I'm going to show you the new upgraded turbocharger for this Cadillac ATS. Here's the stock one. And here's my new big billet compressor turbocharger. Now, if you look at a stock one, you'll be able to tell right away when you look in here, you see that big billet compressor wheel. That billet wheel is quite a bit larger than the stock one, so you can just call this a sleeper turbocharger because it looks completely stock on the outside. But when you look inside the compressor, you can see you can see the wheel. And it turns nice and easy. It's a nice big billet. Big billet wheel. Let's look inside this turbocharger compressor and you can see it's a nice new billet wheel very very tight fit in there and it looks just like a normal turbo on the outside so it's completely sleeper there's where it connects to your uh, your boost hose flange which goes to the intercooler and of course here's the internal wastegate and the actuator and it goes there's the turbo flange that bolts it on the intake or the exhaust manifold and if you look in here there's the wastegate valve right where the downpipe bolts on and back here you can see that's what a this turbine itself is stock so you can tell a stock turbine wheel. You know, it looks stock. However, it spins really fast and takes very little to spin. So by going with a much larger compressor, I mean, we're talking a really big compressor in here. I mean, it's big. <laughs> and it looks stock. That's my favorite part about it. Real stock looking sleeper turbo, but inside you can see a large billet wheel and work has been done to this turbo to increase the inlet and the compressor inside was of course bored and honed and opened enough to fit this big billet wheel. Very nice turbocharger from ZZ Performance. It's probably one of the best sleeper things you can do to your Cadillac ATS. You know, some people bolt on some real big turbochargers, but this is a, a stock looking turbo, but internally has like the biggest compressor you can fit in there. And it's a billet compressor wheel. I mean, that's just a beautiful work of art. That nice billet wheel. So there's the turbo that's going to go in it. And not only will it give you more boost, but since it has a bigger compressor, a huge compressor rotor now, and more air, it's going to give you more volume of boosted air, not just more boost. But it's going to give you more volume because the compressor is larger. And the turbine's going to spin the same, but the compressor has a lot more volume now with this upgraded turbo. So I'm gonna put this turbo on and more to follow. First steps on removing the turbocharger. Remove the inlet, like on my kit. I just remove it from here, unplug the MAF sensor. Disconnect the clamp there. And the intake's off. Then these three bolts here, one, two, three, take off the heat shield. I also separated my catch can. Well, got the heat shield off. Now we've got these four turbo bolts here. Got the cooling line and the oil line on the bottom. And I'm going to show you the inside of this turbo. Remember how I showed you the inside of the performance turbocharger with the billet billet compressor wheel. Here's a stock one. See how small that wheel is? That's a small little wheel. So 
This turbo upgrade is going to be very significant. More to follow. Next thing you do, you take off these three fasteners and unplug two plugs. This plug and the plug on the factory blow-off valve right here. You remove the factory blow-off valve and you install it onto the new turbocharger. The new billet. Billet turbocharger. Woohoo! Look at the difference. Then you look back in the stock one, how small it is. So that's a big compressor wheel difference. Now I'm going to start working this line right here that goes to the PCV. I'm probably eventually going to take that line and run it into the inside of the catch can tube. And then take the out part and run it to that part as well. So that'll be in the future. I've got to undo the two bolts below the turbo boost hose that goes to the intercooler. I've got to remove the coolant in and out lines and the oil in and out lines which is on the top and the bottom of the turbocharger. Remove the down pipe bolts. There's four down pipe bolts back here and of course last but not least the bolts that hold the turbocharger to the manifold. So more to follow. Well, so far I've done some more here. I disconnected the intake tube. They were 13 millimeter bolts. I disconnected the top oil line, the cooler in and out lines, which were 16 millimeters. Make sure you save the little O-ring looking things on the, on the, uh, the nipples. Okay, there's one cooling line. Here's the other other cooling line. I removed the uh, downpipe bolts. I removed the turbine flange bolts. The last thing I have to remove, well, I removed that little air thing right there. Here it is. Just a little uh, Allen wrench. And the last thing I have to do is remove the oil drain, which seems to be in a really hard to get at spot. Yeah, that's gonna be fun, the oil drain. Once I get that out, the turbine should come out. More to follow. Also, don't be like me when you drain your, when you remove your coolant lines, make sure you drain your coolant beforehand so you're not like me. So I had some bad luck. I didn't drain all my coolant all the way out, and so I didn't think there'd be too much coming out, just the turbo coolant lines, but yeah, quite a bit came out. So note to self and note to anyone else doing this, make sure you drain the coolant system before disconnecting the turbo coolant in and out lines. That's kind of why I'm not a fan of turbo cooling lines, because, you know, I'd rather just have oil in and oil out. It's a much simpler turbo, but... A lot of these modern cars so they can have a warranty they have a coolant line going in and out so you don't have to use any common sense anymore you know when you shut off your turbo car after driving it you're supposed to wait a few minutes to let the oil go through the bearings and cool down but most people don't do that so they put cooling lines through the turbo to try to help solve that premature turbo failure if people don't wait a few minutes before they shut off their engine especially after hot dogging it well more to follow well, so far, the hardest thing I've done on this whole fucking thing is removing, I got the top oil, but trying to get the bottom oil line, it's got two little tiny 10 millimeter bolts on it, and it's so hard to get to, it's like directly under there, and there's not a really easy way to get into it. I mean... I don't even believe I'd get under it very well. I'm sure if I had a lift, this thing would be so much easier, but trying to do this from over top of the turbo, taking those little oil lines out is really hard. That bottom oil drain line, that is the hardest part of this whole thing because everything else is off. I just got to get these two 10 millimeter bolts and I can imagine lining this up again afterwards is going to be a real bear and starting the threads on this uh, on the new turbocharger. Right now, this is the old one. I've got two more little bolts 
on that oil drain holding me off from removing this turbo. So this is the hardest part of it to me is the fucking bottom oil line. More to follow. All right. I finally got the old turbo removed and as you can see, look at the difference. Here's the stock turbo. Here's the new billet wheel, huge billet wheel compressor turbo. So see the difference? Small compressor, big compressor and a much larger compressor inlet. Inlet's bigger, inlet's bigger and the compressor's bigger. You see the difference on that billet wheel. Just look at that, wow. Look at that tiny wheel. So this turbo is going to make a huge difference. It was really hard getting off that bottom oil line. You have to remove those two little bolts right there. And they're right on the bottom. And you can't see what you're doing. You're just doing everything by sense of feel. There's the downpipe. There's the turbo flange. Upper oil supply line. Oil return line. Coolant return line. Coolant supply line. And the uh, PCV evacuation. Now I'm gonna eventually hook this to where my can is. So that'll be the, because it's already got these ones hooked up, those two, to the catch can. I'll put an extra one in there since I noticed that. So, you can always improve what you got. Kind of looking around here, see if, uh, but see how tight this location is? It was not an easy feat to remove that turbocharger because you don't have a lot of hand room, especially to get to that part. That was the hardest part, the, the bottom oil line, oil line return. So more to follow, I'll start putting this turbo back in. Another important thing is there's these little seals in the cooling lines. There's a little washer looking thing, but it's got a little rubber on it. So you take those washers off and the one for the oil supply line right here. And you clean them. And you install them on the new turbo. So I put a little black sealant on that little rubber, rubber, rubber and metal washer. And put the washers on both the cooling lines using just a little uh, black RTV cement. And I did it as well for the oil supply line as well. So this new turbo, I'm going to let it sit for a few hours, let the sealant cure so those washers will stay on when I'm reinstalling the turbo and more to follow. Important thing to know, when you attach these, this oil supply line, there's going to be a rubber washer on the top and a rubber, it's kind of a metal metallic with rubber washer. It'll be on the bottom and the top. Now the top one is built in it's on the bolt side and the bottom one is on the turbocharger side so on the turbo oil right on top i had stuck some sealant and stuck the little rubber and metal washer on the turbo so it'll be on this side and then it's already on the bolt side so it'll be on both sides so both sides you will have a black rubber like washer like this it'll be on this side and the bottom side. Also on the cooling lines, there's a rubber rubber, uh, rubber and metal gasket there and a rubber and metal gasket there. And as well as on this as well, there'll be a rubber, rubber metal gasket here and you see it on the bolt side. So when you hook your oil lines and your cooling lines back up, it's very imperative that you have that rubberized metal washer on both sides of the ceiling faces of the oil and cooling lines. Now the bottom one has a gasket on it. As long as that gasket's there, you're good. So just make sure these gaskets, the same ones you took off, are going right back on in the same place. They're like rubber metal gaskets. If you don't, you're gonna have a coolant and an oil leak and you'll have to do this job all over again. So I'm stressing, you can't stress that enough. Also make sure the gasket is on the flange right there. There's a gasket and you reuse it, it's right there. So make sure that stays on there when you're returning the turbocharger or putting the turbocharger, the new turbocharger on. There's no gasket here. It appears to be a crush gasket. 
like a copper crush gasket and there you go that's all you need and it's already there so you're set <laughs> yep so putting this new turbo in will not be so hard I mean, it'll be better than taking it off because that's the first time I've ever taken off this turbocharger. Well, this is the new one going on. The new billet wheel. Huge intake. Huge billet wheel upgrade. But what's funny is it looks so sleeper because it's still in the same compressor housing. They just bored out the compressor housing to fit the giant rotor because you can see the inlet's a lot bigger to accept the big rotor. So well, that's really awesome. I hope you guys like this and more to follow.